Ang Netra. A Neturak Capra, Little Ted Capra, a new Capra. A Neturak Nebeteshera, Little Ted Teshera, a new Nebeteshera. A Neturak Amen Rapata, Little Ted Amen Rapata, a new Amen Rapata. Ita in Ra Nebeteshera. This is your brother, Capra Pata. Coming at you with another video. This will be called Ancient Kemet and the Concept of Forever Becoming. But first, I'd like to give thanks, praise, and honor to my elders, my ancestors, my teachers, and guides. For without you, I could not have done it without standing upon your shoulders and receiving your divine guidance. Like Ra, the primeval cosmic creative force, we too are born from the waters of life. Each of the Neturu, that is so-called Egyptian gods of Kemet, were known to have various aspects and attributes. One aspect of Ra is the spirit of the rising sun. This aspect is called Kepra. In the morning, it was Kepra, dawn of creation, where Ra comes into being in the form of Kepra. And Kepra, in a literal translation, means to roll. It also means to transform or to become. The ancient commission, a.k.a. Egyptian system of belief, is that creation is always transforming and becoming. Kepra is depicted as a scarab or a man with a scarab in the place of a head. The scarab is a type of dung beetle. This dung beetle takes fecal matter from a cow and rolls it into balls across the desert sand where the female would dig a hole and plant the ball of dung with her eggs inside of it, and the larva will feed on the dung and grow into adult scarabs, or capra beetles. This is viewed as nature's sign of transformation and regeneration of life. Like capra, humans have the powers of transformation and regeneration, and this also reminds us that energy is never created or destroyed. However, like Ra, energy goes through constant transformations. Energy, matter, goes through a process of crystallization and sublimation, and it goes from subtle to gross, then back again. This process is the maintaining function within the world, a process that sustains life itself, this was compared to the rising and the setting of the sun. One of the mythical creatures associated with Ra is the phoenix, also known as the Bennu bird. Hatapu Sabat Ma'at Tafnut. It's good to see you, my dear sister. The phoenix is the heart of Ra that represents the regenerative process. According to the myth of the phoenix, once his life is over, the phoenix burns itself up and from its ashes arises a new phoenix. Life is seen as rising and setting, constant renewal of human existence as well as the nature around us, the universe itself. This is the continuity of existence. Life is a continuity and each living being is an individual point of consciousness and manifestation within the allness. Therefore, just like energy, we cannot truly be destroyed either since nothing can be taken away nor given to allness. Death is not the end. In fact, it can further be said that does not mean it's the end of existence, according to an author by the name of Stephen Mailer. It talks about cycles. There's a book he wrote called The Land of Osiris, and it says that the indigenous tradition tells us that there were no words to describe or describe death. 
You will not find words in the ancient commission language for death. When the body ceased to function, it was said that the spirit was westing or going west. This is according to the writings of Mailer, 2001, in a book called The Land of Osiris. Hence, the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Abdul Hakim, the mentor of Stephen uh, Miller, said that there was no Egyptian word in the ancient language for death itself. This is because life and all things are renewed through cycles. The sun born anew each morning, crossing the sky in the solar bark, ages, dies, and travels through the underworld during the night in the cycle of regeneration. Gadala, 2001. So one thing that must be acknowledged, which in today's atmosphere is being not so much ignored, but suppressed. And that is that we are dealing with the Egyptians or the commissions who were Africans. Not only were they African, but they were also melanated, richly melanated, but they went all across the, sc the color spectrum. See, so they want to make it seem like Africans never established any type of civilization. And this is important. Because it has a lot to do with how we see ourselves in the world as far as the ability to not only have contributed in the past, but also our ability to contribute in the, past, in the present. Because the whole thing is that in order to denigrate you and to put you in bondage, they have to take away your sense of self-worth and they have to change your history, alter it, and make it seem like you had no history. Period. And that you were not connected to anything of greatness whatsoever. So the founders of Commission civilization, one of them is said to have been Narmer. King Narmer came from the south and it's been said that he was what they were calling an Ethiopian. And Ethiopian is a Greek word meaning a sunburnt people. Another interesting fact is that it is stated that Osar, Wasir, is reported to have come from Nubia or Kush. The one who is said to be Osir also seems to represent historical personality, according to some of the tradition. However, from the cosmological sense, Osir is a functional part of the universal trinity, a trinity of forces working as principles in nature, and which was later borrowed by Christianity. The oldest trinity in the world is that of a, a woman, a man, and a child. This trinity of ancient Egyptian cosmology is based on the understanding that the universe was held together with both male and female principles. Therefore, there was a balance, the male being Osir and the female being Aset, the child being Haru, period. The ancient Commission, ancient, ancient Egyptian philosophy, if you like to call it that, consisted of the Netaru, who are the forces of nature that has been called and mistranslated to mean gods. But they are actually working in the form of various clusters and trinities and functions in nature. Without this process, the universe would cease to function. So in the world, things function in threes. The universe would remain in chaos and would not exist if there is only a right without a left or a left without a right. And from the commission point of view, the cosmos is a place of where there is the birthing in, that is the life the death and the rejuvenation of a thing, the transmission and the receiving of a thing. That's because there must be a conductor and there must be a receiver in a cosmological sense. This is how the universe works. This is the fluctuation of energy throughout all existence, throughout the cosmos. It is this very dynamic in which all human technology works in the so-called modern world. The universe was seen as having the harmony a male and female, the product of two, the Osar, a set, Heru, functioning as a triple principle in nature. And this is the father, the mother, and the child. Osar is said to be the conductor and the cultivator, the conductor of souls and the cultivator of the soil. Hence, Osar is the seed planter and Aset is a nourisher. Haru represents the finished product or the combination between the two. Haru means one who rises above. Like in the Tao's philosophy of yang and yin, we see that when two polarities are working in harmony, you find a process of growth and ascension, a rising upward. When fire and water come together, there is the vapor. This process is known as sublimation. Haru represents the product of the marriage of Osir and Aset. 
This is the seed of life and the soil that cultivates it. Haru is the Egyptian word meaning one who is above because he represents the fire that rises, the will to exist, and that aspect of us which is determination, the determination to grow. Haru is the child that becomes the king. He is depicted as a being having a human body with the head of a hawk. He is often depicted as the hawk or the peregrine falcon, representing ascension and ability to see beyond the veil. The eyes of Haru are so powerful and keen, they could see a beetle running through the fields and running through the grass from the height of the tallest building in America. We see that the ancient commissions recognized the process of what is called the four elements of earth, wind, fire, and water. And even though we see the evidence laid out before us in the ancient commission papyrus, as well as on their temple walls, the credit has still been given to the Greeks. The Greeks received their knowledge and cosmology from the commissions, according to Herodotus. The Greeks have received the credit for a cosmology that was invented and discovered in Africa. The four elements are not necessarily just elements, but they are also representations of a process of creation and the activity taking place in the universe. The ancient commissions used the concept of the Neturu to represent the process of these four elements. These four elements seem to align with the four sons of Heru. They are said to represent the four pillars of heaven. There has been a debate for eons concerning the nature of reality, whether it is governed by intellectual or intelligent design or simply random occurrence. Is there an intelligence? governing and shaping the universe in which we live. If this is so, is there a plan, an intention? The ancient Commission civilization appeared to have said, yes, our universe is governed by intelligence. Not only is this intelligence considered to be sentient, but so that humans are made as its smaller image. Therefore, we have a universe within ourselves. The ancient commission seemed to have been the first to coin the term as above, so below. The ancient commissions believed that their kings and queens embodied this intelligence and that they were the living images of the Neturu. One example is Amun Tutank, who you may know as Tutank Amun, the living image of Amun, who is also known as King Tut. Once again, Science is beginning to ask the very same questions already answered by the great thinkers of the ancient world. And there appears to be confirmation in the realm of quantum physics and appears that the ancient commissions were trying to tell us something with their own theory of everything. The ancestors were telling us in various ways that the divine did not want to be summed up to any one form. Hmm. It is not that they did not believe in and intelligence governing the cosmos. They wanted us to look into the possibility that all living forms and inanimate objects were the expressions of the intelligence governing the cosmos. And that is where their ideology begins to look more like monotheism. But in the Commission Egyptian civilization, you see that each city was governed by a deity or a netter. In the book of Coming Forth by Day from Night, coined the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the reader will find that the deceased had to know the various names of the Neturu or deities, and he or she had to call out their names to pass to a further division in the transitional stages of what is called death. This was the path to immortality. It is important to know that this process corresponded with astronomical events as well. The Neturu, aka gods and deities, had to be named where the guardians were to oversee the divisions of the heavens. They represented different aspects of the cosmos as well as different levels of intelligence within a psyche of the deceased. So in the book of knowing the creations of Ra and overthrowing Apep, Ra in the form of Temu is made to say, quote, I have created myself in a multitude of forms. The text is telling us that the supreme being expresses itself through the plant and animal kingdom, the Egyptians' commission saw every living thing as a part of divine expression. Life was to the commission sacred, 
and is forever adapting to the circumstances in which it exists. The book of knowing the creations of Ra and overthrowing a pep in the chapter eight of Budget's work titled The History of the Creation of the Gods in the World, page 308, it reads, quote, I am he who came into being in the form of Kepra, which means becoming. Creation is an expression of movement and becoming. The universe is animated, and as far as the commissions were concerned, it is intelligent. It is up to us to learn its secrets and therefore live in harmony with it. With that, my beautiful family, I'm going to cut this short. We're going to have more to come soon. Until then, Uncle Ucha Sinab, peace, love, and blessings. May each and every one of you have a prosperous night, a prosperous time of your life. May you continue to receive blessings, and may you continue to be well and in good health. Atepu.